from 3M Public Security. Wally, can you tell me what 3M are bringing to Interpol World? Well, Phil, um, we're bringing our uh, public security products. We're bringing uh, innovation. Uh, and I know that's very important right now for Interpol here in Singapore, opening up their innovation center. We're bringing ideas. Our public security division, part of the big 3M family, we take into secure documents, um, polycarbonate cards, uh, chips, uh, biometrics, very important. We do all the biometrics, finger, face, and iris. We do license plate recognition systems. We do electronic monitoring. All of these and the components that are necessary to produce those, the fingerprint scanners, the cameras necessary to capture all this information, the passport readers, we produce those in-house. So an in-house holistic system, um, how is that helping uh, people that are having to uh, monitor the uh, cross-border traffic and how is it helping the individuals who are trying to get from A to B? Yeah, the, the, the biggest concerns in today's world is it's a very small world and having a, a very small world means you have a lot of people that have access to different borders, different countries very quickly. In one day, just coming here, uh, I've covered three countries. And unless you secure those, and my law enforcement background over 30 years uh, makes me ask the question of the who, what, when, where, and how. The who being who's the person and how did that information get into the system. Uh, the what, the, the what being where, where did that information come from. The, the how, how are they coming into a country? Is it land, sea, or air? Um, when? Uh, time of day? Uh, uh, is, is it uh, with a group? Uh, and who, what, when, where, how? Okay. Again, uh, how am I going to determine who that person is? Well, the key to that is at the beginning. Biometrics. Before you issue any kind of document, especially a secure document, because the document is saying, I'm a true document. But is it saying the person it was issued to is the true person? Once you add biometrics to the mix, at the beginning, at the enrollment, you enroll this person with all biometrics, finger, face, and iris. Because there is a chance, and I've been doing fingerprints since 1966, where your skin, it gets damaged, and it, it be, the quality becomes unreadable or poor. Facial. Well, I can tell you right now, when I was uh, 246 pounds, I didn't look like this. <laughs> and I used to have hair. Um, and iris. You can damage your eyes, and if someone doesn't have the capabilities of using iris as a matching point, then you're, you're back to square one. You're not going to be able... But if you have all three of those, even at a weakened state, when you combine the results, you can now positively identify that person. This gives you the ability to know the document that's been issued is to that individual. And that's very important when it's presented to someone that hasn't issued that document. So it all sounds very complex and the data management must cause challenges, but what other challenges are there with um, bringing these technologies in? Well, some of the challenges are the uh, individual agencies. If Interpol, well, the world, approximately mm -hmm. 196 countries in the world, uh, Interpol has 190 members, which is very good because they can exchange data. Um, but every country has a different form of how they document. The passports have a format. The, the ICAO standard, this is, this is the format used, but it doesn't say what has to go in there or, or how the document was securely issued. And a lot of countries are adopting biometrics, but one or two of the biometrics. Mm -hmm. But if you do all three, you now have everything you need to make sure your documents will pass inspection in any country, irregardless of what biometrics they're using. But you mentioned three biometrics. Um, how is biometric technology developing and how is it changing over the next few years? Well, 
Currently, finger, face, and iris mm -hmm. are rising to the crowd. Prior to that, fingerprints was the premier biometric. Um, facial has come into its own, and now iris, prime example, uh, the country of India. Mm -hmm. The country of India is registering every resident of India. Currently, I think the database is probably somewhere around 500 million records finger, face, and iris, capture and agreement. The remaining 300 million are in the process, and it's going to be used for authentication purposes. Mm -hmm. In the banking industry in India, if someone wants to verify uh, the loan or the money I'm giving this person, they can just send the fingerprint over to the UID, and it will process it. It will take the template that was produced by the, the, uh, the enrollment, verify it, and say, yes, that you, that is the person who's giving you the correct ID number. So. The ease we've supplied, Cogent has supplied probably the majority of the kits to capture the iris and capture the fingerprints for the India market, and it's super simple. It's very fast, it's very easy, and this can be accomplished around the world. Wally, thank you very much indeed for spending some time to share your thoughts and ideas with Interpol World Television. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.